the heavenly divine council. All right, we're going to start off with Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Read that for us, Brother Morgan, as soon as possible. And we're going to start explaining to you our great misunderstanding of how Yahweh governs the earth. Have you ever wondered how does one entity, Yahweh, govern the whole earth? How does he do it? Well, a great example is how does Queen Elizabeth, she's only one entity, how does she govern all of Great Britain? Right. She doesn't do it. She's not down at the post office making sure the mail is being delivered. She doesn't look over the finance department or the health department. She is ruler of Great Britain, but she does not govern Great Britain. She's the ruler. She puts together a what? A government. That government is entities that do her bidding. And today I fear that you and I have no understanding or at least a great understanding of our interaction with Yahweh's government. Let's read Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. So that tells us that we do not wrestle against Joe Biden. Come on. We don't wrestle against Kamala Harris. We don't wrestle against Nancy Pelosi. We don't wrestle against George Soros. See, that's my problem with this patriot movement. I have a real problem with what I'm seeing. Because we have carnal-minded patriot leaders that don't understand what we're fighting. Everybody wants to focus on the red hats, what they call them, the white hats or the whoever. One I don't know. I can't keep up with all the hats. Everybody wants to talk about what uh, Hillary is doing and what this one is doing. And that's what Satan wants you looking at. He wants you looking at the outside. He loves for you to blame it on Hillary. That's right. All right. Now, I'm no Hillary fan, so don't misunderstand me. But Satan is a great magician. He wants you seeing what your eyes can see. <laughs> you're not careful. You'll think your enemy is a Democrat. Because Satan wants you to hate everything and to focus on everything except where your focus should be. He keeps us distracted. We don't wrestle against the Democratic Party. There is something controlling the Democratic Party that we're wrestling against. We don't wrestle against George Soros. We wrestle against what's controlling his mind. What's speaking to that man? Remember this, brothers and sisters, angels are spirits. They, at one time before the flood, they were able to manifest physically and interact with human beings. At one time, they taught human beings how to make weapons of war. These angels had freedom of translation to go back and forth into the earthly realm or to the spirit realm. However, when they were arrested before the flood and put into Tartarus, which is the spirit prison, if you don't understand all that, it's on my YouTube channel called Spirits in Prison. When you understand that these spirits were bound into chains of darkness. That word means they were bound. You can't bind a spirit with chains. That's a euphemism. They were made invisible. 
at one time, these angels were not invisible. They slept with women. Oh, yes. Genesis chapter That's 6, it. it's in your Bible. Go read it. They created Nephilim. But they have now been robbed, and that ability has been taken back from them, and they've been put in prison in chains of darkness. They're made invisible. So now, if these demon powers want to wreak havoc on the earth, they cannot do it. If they want to launch a nuclear missile, they don't have a finger that can push a button. As much as I hate to admit it, they're a lot like Patrick Swayze in the movie Ghost. When he's trying to move that picture frame. Right? And it wouldn't move after he died. Because spirit cannot operate in the in the transit the transit uh, transition of time so if they want to strike a nuclear weapon how do they do it somebody tell me they need a human through a they man's need mind a vessel they need a human and and tonight, today we're going to talk about how they govern but there is another government that we're going to discuss and that I believe is going to help a lot of things make sense to you. Let me go back and share my screen again and let's get right back to the lesson. All right. Now, the way that we need to understand this, we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. Now, what you're going to find in Deuteronomy 32 and 8 is one of the greatest errors in your Bible. One of the greatest mistranslations that it's sad that it was translated wrong. And because it was translated wrong, we've lost out on our understanding of the divine heavenly counsel. Let's read Deuteronomy 32 and 8, Brother Morgan. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. All right. So there was a time after the flood when Yahweh divided 70 nations. And I'll read that to you in a moment. He put walls up between them, if you will, borders, because God loves borders. Yahweh loves the people divided. There will never be unity on this earth. Never. Yahweh will never allow there to be unity. Because Yahweh is what set up the disunity. When you hear people talking about we need to all come together. That's not the voice of God. Because God said this is the hour of separating. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. When you hear demons talk about all the nations need to come together, it's never going to happen until Yahshua brings them all together. Why did God set up division? Because if we are unified before Christ returns, we will never long for his coming kingdom. Come on, Pastor. Amen. So he divided the nations in verse 8 of Deuteronomy 32. But we have a major problem. Read verse 9, brother. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now here's our problem. Who is the Lord's people? Who was the Lord's people when this verse was written? The Jews. The Israelites. Israelites. Okay. Y'all need to learn. Everybody needs to learn the difference in a Jew and an Israelite. The Israelites Amen. were the people of Yahweh. Now, verse 38 says that God divided 70 nations. I, I know you don't know where I'm getting 70 from. I'll read it on the next screen to you. He divided 70 nations according to the number of the children of Israel. 
And yet in verse 9, it says, but Yahweh's portion is Israel. Yeah, his people. Now, this is important for you to understand. Of all the nations of planet Earth, all the nations of planet Earth, they're all governed by an angel except one nation. Woo, Shababaya. The nation of Israel is Yahweh's portion. Wow. Glory to God. All the nations are governed by angels. But Yahweh watches over Israel. And don't you know that America is part of Israel? We're part of those lost tribes. And now you know why America is first. Because we are Ephraim. We are the brothers of Judah. Hallelujah. My God from Mount Zion. Hallelujah. So, so what is the problem in verse 8? It's mistranslated. I've got a question for all of you. Right after the flood, when Yahweh divided these nations, did the nation of Israel exist? No. No. So how could he have divided the nations according to the children of Israel if there were no children of Israel and that nation did not exist at that time? That's right. That's a gross mistranslation. And because it's mistranslated, we get a wrong idea. If you'll read the third century translation of the Hebrew scriptures called the Septuagint, it gets it right. Now read, Brother Morgan, how it should read. Look at your screen, Brother Morgan, right under verse. Read it from the screen, not your Bible. Hey, on the right side? Yes, sir. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the people according to the number of the sons of Yahweh. <laughs> Now, English word is the 1851 translation of the Septuagint should say the sons of Yahweh or the angels of God or the angels of Yahweh. So okay. when Yahweh separated the nations, he separated them according to a certain number of angels. And he gave those nations to each of those 70 angels to govern. Wow. Except for the nation of Israel. Israel. Because verse 9 says that Yahweh's portion is not among those 70 nations. Oh, no. Woo! Yahweh's portion is a separate nation that's not governed by this demon council. It's not governed by fallen angels. That's why you can wake up, brothers and sisters, every day in a spirit of excitement and joy when every nation around you is depressed and discouraged because you are governed from Adah. You are governed by Yahweh himself. The Holy Spirit is your covering authority. That's good. You are a different people. You are not of this world. Now, does it make sense to you? You're not of that division of nations. You are Yahweh's portion. Hallelujah. My God. Y'all don't, I don't know if you understand the power of what was just spoken because you don't belong to those to that division of nations. You're not part of China. You're not part of any of these nations. You are Yahweh's portion if you are the nation of Israel. Which Hallelujah. You are. Hallelujah to Yahweh. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now let's discuss these angels of Yahweh. At the Tower of Babel, 
Great mysteries took place that are little understood even to this day. Man was separated into 70 distinct sovereign nations. This was done by and for the angels of Yahweh. Now, there is a historical document that I want to read to you. It is not canon scripture, but I'm of the opinion that it is scripture, but I won't go there with you today. The book of Jasher, chapter 9, verse 31. The original church considered this to be scripture. The apostles read out of this book. So I feel safe in doing the same. Let's read Jasher 9.31 on your screen, Brother Morgan. And Yahweh said to the 70 angels that stood before him, to those who stood near him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. Now listen carefully. Here's Yahweh. And by the way, if you need to hear it from canon scripture, I'll be there next, okay? Let me just build this foundation. There is a council, a heavenly divine council that is standing with Yahweh. And Yahweh speaks to this council. And even your Bible says, he said, let us go down. Why didn't he come down by himself? Why does he need this council? Because evidently on this council, it is a council of 70. And it is through this council that Yahweh, the eyes of the Lord, which are the angels of the Lord, run to and fro throughout the earth, governing the earth on behalf of Yahweh. He said, let us go down, confuse their tongues. Now read Genesis chapter 10. 32. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. The nation of Israel did not yet exist. No nation of Israel was appointed to one of these angels at the great division. And that's important for you to understand that you now you know what the Bible means when it says you are in this world, but you but not are everyone. not of this world. You have been assigned to a predestined portion, and you are Yahweh's portion. Now let's go to Second Chronicles 18 and 18. Can we <clears throat> answer a couple questions first, Pastor? Okay, yeah, go right ahead. Um, Christopher Aguan. Brother Christopher, go ahead. Brother Christopher. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, what was interesting about your last uh, uh, statement um, about, you know, uh, we are the uh, brothers of <laughs> Judah um, kind of make you think, is that the reason why? Everybody else around the world wants to come to the United States of America. <laughs> so nobody wants to go to uh, go to the different countries except everybody wants to come in here. So that kind of uh, you know makes you think now more. And now you know why we are that shining city on a hill. You yes. Know? Wow. Amen. Uh, Sister Rhonda Connor, unmute yourself, darling. We have over a hundred students in class today. Welcome everyone. When you say that the one world government will not come into fruition until the return of the Messiah, all of this, you know, I hear from a lot of people that we are going in the direction of the one world government, but it's not, are you saying that that's not going to happen until Jesus comes? We're, we're out of time, Rhonda. There's no time. There's no way that will ever happen. Everyone go watch my video called The Fifth Kingdom. The Fifth Kingdom. It's on YouTube. There I explain Daniel's vision about the statue. And when you get down to the toes of that statue, those toes are divided. 
They will always be divided until that fifth kingdom comes. So no, ma'am, these are carnal prophecy teachers that are teaching there's going to be, listen, we are so close. We're in the Hebrew year 5782. We're so close now to the end of the sixth day that you're out of time for a rapture. You're out of time for a one world government. You couldn't even form it if you had to. We're, 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 now, are they trying to? Absolutely. Would, does George Soros fantasize about it? Absolutely. Are they pushing their agenda? That's my problem with some of these YouTubers. They're so busy talking about what men are doing that they don't even understand the message is not about a coming one world government. The message is about the coming kingdom of God that's about to be established from sea to shine and sea. Quit running down these rabbit holes, chasing every theory. I'm teaching you the theory right now. The theory is our Lord is coming back to earth again soon and very soon, and all of these troubles will be made right. Get your focus right, ladies and gentlemen. Chase the truth. Somebody needs to put that on a t-shirt. Chase the truth. Hallelujah. Don't chase everything else. Chase Hallelujah. the truth. Amen. Brother, Thank you. Brother Joseph, God bless you. God bless you, brother. I, I, I when it spoke to my heart when you were speaking. And I, you know, I've been studying biblical Hebrew 14 years, but it's wonderful what you bring to life and what you expose as truth in the Torah, it's amazing. It, it just connects to me. But I'm just curious of your thought on this. When, to what you're saying, is it is that then allude to why Michelle's do that, who's not an, uh, it, it, it's not known of as an Israelite, he goes to Abraham, he, he, he knows who the true God is, and also uh, Jethro, Moses' yes. father-in-law. yes. Yes, yeah. uh, you know, those are phenomenal questions. I do have a teaching on Melchizedek on YouTube that will line up perfectly with this lesson, brother. So you're on the right path there. You're definitely on the right track, brother Joseph. It all connects. Listen, there's no new revelation. There's an old truth that's being revealed, that, that's being uncovered. Amen. So praise Yahweh. It's just going around and around, brother Morgan. Amen. Praise Yahweh. Let's read 2 Chronicles 18 and 18. I'm only pushing through, guys, because I'm, I've got to get to that meeting. Let's go. Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I say the Lord, I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Now, we have Yahweh on his throne, which is a symbol of government. It's a symbol of rulership. But yet there is a host of heaven, and that always refers to the angels. There is a host of heaven standing on his right, standing on his left. This is the heavenly council. I'm going to prove it to you in a moment. These are the angels that did not fall in the rebellion. These are the ones that Yahweh divided the nations according to this number of 70 angels. Now you know Ephesians 6, what it means better. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness yeah. and governing places, high places. Yahweh is in full control, even over the evil spirits or the fallen angels. Yahweh is in complete control. He only approves the courses of action that fulfill his purposes, which in this case was to bring about the death of a bad president. Oh, I love, you know why I love these verses we're fixing to get into? The next time someone tells you God could care less who the president is, <laughs> I'm about to bust that all to pieces. <laughs> God could care less who the queen is, who the king is. God's not involved in politics. Let me tell you something. These 70 nations are. These 70 angels are. Why? Because 
all of the nations are being used okay. together to bring to pass the purposes of God. If God's not concerned about national government, he's not concerned about nations. When did God quit caring about nations? Why is America so prominent in God's plan? Because don't drink the Kool-Aid. People email me every day. Preach the word, Brother Vaughn, and get out of politics. I tell them that is the word. <laughs> Amen. Because we're fixing to finish reading a story. If you'll go read 2 Chronicles 18 and 18, let's go back there, Brother Morgan, and let's finish this story in 2 Chronicles 18 and 18. It's very important. That you, the reason I said we're going to pull back the curtain today, I want to show you why God raised up Professor Toto. I want to show you what Yahweh is doing through the voices of certain men in this hour. Second Chronicles 18 and 18. Again, he said, Therefore, hear the word of Yahweh. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. And all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Read. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel? All right. He met Yahweh said, now I want you to think about this. If you don't believe in a heavenly divine counsel, I'm fixing to show you where Yahweh is asking for advice. <laughs> now let that sink in. I don't believe in no divine counsel. Okay, then you don't believe your Bible. Yahweh is standing there with his counsel. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. And he asked his counsel. The Bible said in the multitude of counsel, even Yahweh goes by that law. Woo, Shada. He even asked his counsel. What should I do? <laughs> you know why I laugh? Because we don't know our Bibles like we thought we did. He's asking Amen. the angels, how should I get rid of that president? Oh, yeah. I hope he's having one of them council meetings right now. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Yahweh asked this angel, I don't like that president. I don't like that king. I don't want him ruling over my people because Israel is mine. America is mine. And I don't want that fool in charge of my nation. What should we do? Now, in all of your life, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever considered Yahweh as asking counsel? I didn't. I just assumed he gave the orders. See? But you see, even okay. Yahweh practices that law. That in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Wow. Read, Brother Morgan. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spoke, saying, after this manner. Now, he's asking these angels, how do we bring this king down? And then he says to them, who will go and do it? Read. And one spoke, saying, after this manner. And another, saying, after that manner. Hey, well, hold on. What does this sound like to y'all? A council. A council meeting. One said this. One said that. Amen. One said this. One said that. And there sits Yahweh as the chairman of the board. Wow. He's sitting there with that council of angels. Woo! Hallelujah. And read the rest of it. Then there come out a spirit and stood before the Lord. Before there Yahweh. came out an angel. That, what is an angel? They are ministering what? Spirit. Spirit. So an angel stepped before the chairman of the board, read, and said, I will entice him. And Yahweh said unto him, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, that's powerful. 
Yeah. I'm fixing to teach you the job of angels. He didn't Hallelujah. say, I, I'll, I'll go kill him because an angel can't kill nobody. Not in this age unless God can. He said, I will go and do what? Entice him. Oh, there you go. I will go and use the power that I have to speak to his mind. He thinks it's his thoughts. He don't know. It's the voices of angels. Hallelujah. My God. Oh, hallelujah. Every one of you today are hearing one or two angels. You're hearing the evil or the good. This is not thoughts. This is the voices of enticing hallelujah. spirits. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you. Good Lord. or evil. Woo, hallelujah. He said, I'll go entice that president. I'll go entice Mike Pence. I'll go entice. I will. Good or bad? Good or bad? And you thought you right. was fighting against flesh and blood? There's something happening behind the curtains that nobody's ever told you about. Right. And until you understand this, you will always be chasing red hats, white hats, black hats, and copycats. You better right. learn the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo, Thank you, Father. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? What did y'all always say? Whoa, whoa. Did y'all always with? say, how are you going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> y'all feel you? Is anybody's little brain starting to steam a little bit? Y'all always asking an angel, well, reckon how we should do it. Come on. My, my, my. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. In the mouth of all his prophets. Oh, my, my. I will go to his counselors and be a lying spirit. I will cause them to lie. My, my, my. <clears throat> Woo, hallelujah. I told y'all today was going to be deep. Yeah. Yahweh, I will go and cause them to lie to that president. Even about the vaccines, whatever I got to do, I'll send counselors that will lie. Read. And Yahweh said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. What did Yahweh Go. say? Yahweh says, I like it. And now I use my supreme authority and I tell you how it's going to turn out. It will work. Come on. <laughs> Read. Go out. And do even so. Now, did that angel have one moment of authority to go out and do it until Yahweh released that lying spirit? No. No. <laughs> Don't hate the ones that's lying on you. They didn't do it. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. They lied on me. No, they didn't. They did. <laughs> hallelujah. Ooh. Oh, hallelujah. Learn who your enemies are and you'll love your physical enemies. You'll love your human enemies when you realize you don't have an enemy. That's powerful. My God, you better learn these things. If not, you'll hold bitterness in your heart. You'll be hurt at people. You'll think that people's doing this to you. I see two hands up quickly. Uh, Sister Morgan. When you said, hold on, you got to mute yours or something. When you were saying, never mind. No, 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 go ahead. Tell Brother Morgan what to say. Uh, while they're doing that, Brother Joseph, go ahead. Praise God, brother. Praise God. Uh, I think it's 2 Thessalonians coming to mind where he says the powerful delusion, which will allow people to believe. There we go. And a uh, quick question for you, because uh, I know from Job, we know that they come before the seed of, of Yahweh. Yeah. That we, know, we know they have access. And Satan himself has access. Yes. But is, is the left or the right? <laughs> this is funny. I don't mean to be funny. Sure. And be political. But we got the left hand and the right hand. We got the right. Democrats and the Republicans, right? 
Right. But is the left or the right, is one side of them demonic angels and the other side the, 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 the heavenly host of, of righteous angels? And finally, this is why the Book of Enoch is held from us. Yes. The Book of Enoch speaks about, I've been studying Book of Enoch for two years, all of the angels and what they do, and also that they are messengers and they all have one mission. Each angel has a separate mission, a separate mission. And Sorry, what you just to... said, they're, they're messengers. And I don't believe people quite understand that means. Those voices in your head are messages. Who sends messages? Messengers. Learn to listen to them. Matter yes. of fact, I was in Ohio when a messenger spoke to me. You know, a lot of times we say the Lord spoke to me. His messengers did. The Lord spoke to me through a messenger and said, pick up your phone and talk to the nation. I didn't have to listen. And if I didn't, you wouldn't be in this class today. That was a year yeah. ago. A messenger sent me a message. Woo! And I listened. Amen. 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 Amen, Praise Amen brother. God. Praise uh, Sister God. Nicole Kirk. Amen. Praise God. Just forget it. It's Okay, so could I be correct in saying, just as you're saying in this case, that the heavenly angels, the hosts that were before God, were able to lure um, King Ahab into, into submission and do what his will was to be done. But as this morning, I was trying to explain to my son Landon that just as we all have uh, the angels that basically called us to be here this morning because like i said we had just received this email last night wow. and we'd only came into your ministry as far as following you just recently so just as like i was called in time just as the house yes. of ephraim being collected am i correct yes what the reason y'all are all here today there was a call there was a message that went out sister nicole how did you hear about us if you don't mind me asking um, to be honest, as I started seeking the truth about a year plus ago, and um, I came across your ministry, ministry through YouTube, and it was through one of your constitu uh, constitution classes, mm -hmm. and then from there forward, I re realized you had a ministry, and so as I've been, um, I dwindled down, and I got away from my NIV Bible, I got this version of the the book of Yahweh as well. Yes. I just have been on a search for truth. And so I had to go through a lot of pastors and a lot yes. of ministries and basically filter it all out. And so I've been led here. I've been following you as well as a uh, triumph and truth. So excellent, excellent, excellent. I've been sending emails and calls um, and nobody had been responding. So when I got the email, I was really excited. Like I was saying, you I sent, you sent me an email and nobody responded. Right. I had sent to the ministry. So when I finally got an email, I'm like, oh, somebody must have put it in. But it's anyhow. Aside I'm so from that, sorry. I always respond to my emails if possible. My personal email address, Nicole, is brothervon at gmail.com. Okay? Okay. I always respond, not right away, but as soon as I can, brothervon at gmail.com. And listen. Yeah, I if you I'm consider sorry. yourself part of my ministry, I give first priority to those that call me pastor, those that lean on me. I give first priority. So in your subject line, always put ministry or first harvest so I know that you're 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 it's not just a political follower. Right. Okay, first harvest. Yeah, ministry first harvest. Yes. Got it. Yes. Well, we're so glad Yahweh brought you here, and I can promise you one thing: Amen. you uh, you you landed it. You landed in something. That's all I can say. Hallelujah! Yeah, praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen, brother Morgan. Did you want to give us Sister Justina's question before we continue? Here she is. Uh, so, when you were talking about um, how how um, God has councils in heaven. Yes. You know, in, in the scripture, it talks about how we're to pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There you go. <laughs> and now so that scripture makes so much sense. <clears throat> you know, the Lord, the, the Lord does everything here on earth that he does in heaven. His government's the same way as he wants his government on earth to be. It's just Wait. right now it's corrupted which is obedient people. That's why we are a government in training. We are training for reigning, schooling for ruling. And if y'all don't have that t-shirt, Sister Jill's got it available. 
All right, finish reading that, Brother Morgan, and let's move on. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and Yahweh has spoken evil against thee. I thought God didn't send no evil according to Creflo Dollar. Mm -mm. That ain't what this Bible says. Dollar Word of God. How many has ever heard if, if it's bad, it comes from the devil? If it's good, it comes from God. How many has ever heard that? Yeah. Yeah. Your Bible just slapped it, right? Your Bible, your Bible just handled that line. Yeah. Yahweh's over the good and the wicked. God's over the good and the evil. That's right. Nothing's done without his permission. That's why you need to learn to give thanks in all things, because only then have you come into maturity. Wow, that's so powerful. Amen. <laughs> Sister Rhonda Connor. Okay, I just want to make sure that I got this straight. Um, the 70 members of the council yes. are not the fallen angels. No, ma'am. But, but the fallen angels are trying to work against this council. Yes. Right? And, you're, and we're fixing to make that so plain, Sister Rhonda, so, in just a few minutes. So when... We see these nations that are evil. Yes. Uh, that are, they have a good angel that's yes. trying to rule them, but they yes. have this gotcha. Thank yes. you so much. Oh, yes, ma'am, Sister Rhonda. You're teaching the rest of my lesson already. I love it. Sister Courtney, go right ahead. Um, Pastor, a virtuous woman has a question, but yes. she I don't know if she's able to raise her hand or not. Okay, go ahead, virtuous woman. Where's Sister Dot today, by the way? Go ahead, Sister, Sister Virtuous Woman. Okay, we'll try again, Courtney, in a moment. Now, let me ask all of you something. How would Hello. God... Go ahead, Virtuous Woman. Yes, hi, Toto, our pastor. Oh, How are you? Hello. <laughs> She this is my first you, time tuning, you, tuning into you. I'm so happy I was oh. able to figure it out. Oh, y'all, she was with me on January the January 6th. January 6th. In the house we were staying in. <laughs> but anyway. Hold on, everybody. She, she's the lady that slept all night in her car in those freezing temperatures to get there and support our president. Amen. You're a hero. We love you. Okay, good memory. Um, anyway, your Passover is going to be on my birthday, and I want to be part of it. Yeah. April 5th, right? Yeah, I've read it. Can you tell me, if, are there any surrounding hotels close by? Well, why don't we do this? I rented an Airbnb, a big house. I rented two of them with five bedrooms each. And so we'll just give you one of those bedrooms and uh, be a lot cheaper than a hotel. I do it for $50 a night. Okay. All right. So we'll stay, stay in touch. Yeah, stay in touch. I love you. I love you too, and I have a gift for you that I bought from Jamaica. I was in Jamaica a couple of weeks ago. Yaman, Yaman, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Thank you. All right. You're very special to me. I love you. I love you too. We started pastor. off in this battle together. Amen. Let's go to the finish hey, line. Hey, Pastor. Yes. Um, is there any way that we can increase capacity? Because there's people trying to get in, and we're at 100. I didn't know there was a capacity. I don't know how to do that. Uh, you'll have to research it for me. Uh, I will. <laughs> is this a, yeah, is you have this, to get the paid version. Pro, right. If this is not a pro account, uh, Pastor, then then you can only go up to 100. Oh, on, really? On my pro, yeah, my pro account, I can go up to 200, I believe. Well, okay. how much, how, how much I'd be, is an I'd account? Be, I'd be glad to give it to you whenever you do your Bible study. I'll give you my credentials and you can use it oh. if you want. Okay, so you have a pro. Well, that may be a little confusing for people. Um, well, how no, much is a pro account? About two hundred dollars a year. Ooh, oh, a year? Yeah. Oh, I might could do that. Okay, all right. Um, then, uh, Courtney, I can give you my credit card if you want to go in and. No, Pastor Toto, I'm going to give it to your ministry. I'll give I'll give my information to Courtney. Oh, Thank amen. you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Joseph. And then, Pastor, I'll reach out to you for your um, your user and stuff. Thank you. All right, guys, we've got to move on. Now, let me ask you a question, if I can. Why would God authorize a lie? 
You know, God hates liars, right? Why would God authorize a lie? Because, because God, you, go ahead. Because God wanted to get rid of that king, and the only way he lived was to get to get them to lie to his. He wouldn't. They knew he wouldn't listen to. to okay, I'm about to whoever study. was the prophet. But okay, so here's he, my question, and I want everybody to grasp this. Does God use lying prophets and lying preachers for his purposes? Absolutely. And it's to find out who's not the liars and who is telling the truth. God had to let you come through lying prophets all these years, lying pastors, so that when you heard the truth, you would recognize it immediately. God uses the wheat to find the tares. God uses the liars to reveal the truth. That way you can recognize the lie from the truth. God authorizes these things. Amen. Now, one of the great sins of many of these nations became angelic worship. The Bible calls these angels what? Let's read Jeremiah 19 and 13. And, and the house... Then 2 Kings 17 and 15, roll. And the house of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven. Huh. And, Go ahead. And have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Whoa. All right. So these hosts of heaven are now called other what? Gods. Oh, we're going to get somewhere in a minute. That's why I don't like the word God. I, I use it sometime to help people know who I'm talking about. But I prefer his name, Yahweh. Amen. We're not being sticklers about not using the word God. But the truth is, there are gods everywhere. And if you don't know that there is, somebody said there's only one God. No, there's not. There's more than one God because the word God means what? Object of worship. <laughs> There's only one God. No, there's only one creator. There's only one Yahweh. But Paul said there's gods aplenty. And these angels are gods. Brother Von, yeah. how are angels gods? How are dogs dogs? <laughs> I'm fixing to mess some of y'all up so bad. You may not be back next week. How, how are uh, there, Sister Dot? I've been missing you, Dot, looking for you all morning, darling. I can't, I don't feel right if you're not here. How, somebody said, Brother Vaughn, angels aren't gods. Well, what are they called? The sons of Yahweh, the sons of God. That's it. Man produces man. God produces gods. Dogs produce dogs. Cats Hallelujah. produce cats. Dummies produce dummies. Liberals Hallelujah. produce liberals. And a god produces gods. <laughs> Woo! That's why these angels are other gods. They're not the almighty God. They're not Yahweh. That's why you need to learn to He's use his to name. A little bit. He's in the hotel where I'm doing this because he wants to talk to his people. Oh, Pat, tell him I love him, whoever that is. Okay. All right. Okay. Quickly, we're up. Other gods, you've got to learn why the name Yahweh or Yahuwah, however you understand, it, is so powerful because it sets him apart. From among the gods. Come on. Glory to God. Demigods. Now, who said who just said that? Was that you, Sandra? Somebody said something? Yes, that was me. I said they're demigods. Now that's exactly right. But they are gods nonetheless. They are demigods. They are not 
I, I'm making that plain. They are not Yahweh. They are not the almighty God. But they are the offspring of Yahweh. Could they be anything less than a God? I mean, come on. The, some of y'all say you believe the Bible. The Bible says, let everything produce after its own kind. Amen. When Yahweh produces something, it's got to be after his own kind, which is the God kind. Elohim, which is a family of these gods. I believe that's why he said that we were created in his image and in his likeness, creating himself in us. Bottom line. And folks, you've got to understand the world you're living in. It's not a Democrat world. It's not a Republican we're world. We're not gods. I don't even we identify. Go ahead. I don't even identify as a Republican, to be honest with you. I'm a believing patriot, whatever that makes me. Because I know that those boxes, those labels, they don't identify who I am. I'm an end time voice of truth. And there's no box that fits that except the Elijah box. And you've got to learn who you are. You are not of those 70. You are Yahweh's portion. I love that verse. I can read that verse. You are Yahweh's portion. He took you from among the nations and chose you above everybody else. Read wow. 2 Kings 17 and 15. And they rejected his statues and his covenant that he made with their fathers <clears throat> and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and become vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom Yahweh had charged them and they should not do like them. This is very important. They rejected the commandments, the Sabbath day, the holy days. They rejected clean food and unclean. They rejected all of that. But guess what they went after? These angels, these other gods that the heathens worship. They were spiritual, but not biblical. And I'm fixing to preach right now. You better get ready. They were just like the Pentecostal church is today. My God from heaven. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Chasing after the spirit. Falling out under anybody that touches it. Chasing after angels. I tell you what, you better be very leery when people start talking about angels too much, but they're not talking about them commandments. They become spiritual many of you watching me i have some that go to my church that's too spiritual Ooh, i know some of you don't comprehend what i'm saying and i understand that how can you be too spiritual chasing after the holy spirit without chasing after the law of yahweh hallelujah amen don't you ever say good morning, Holy Spirit. That's a demonic expression. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray to our Father in heaven. Yahweh. Yahweh. These ministers that's promoting Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, all, all over and over, like they're in some kind of a trance. While rejecting the law of God. The Bible calls them heathens. I don't care if they're Pentecostal, Baptist, charismatic. If you don't keep God's holy Sabbath, you are a heathen. Don't get mad at me. All I did was read the verse. Sometimes the truth hurts. It does, honey. We're chasing after spirits. They some of y'all right now, if somebody puts a flyer in town, come get your word, prophesy or what's his name is in town, you will run down there, but you will not darken the door on the Sabbath day. You know why? You're chasing after spirits. God's calling you in this assembly back to holiness. 
back to the way, the separated way, the consecrated way, the way out of Babylon. It's not a spiritual path. It's a biblical path. That's right. Amen. All right, I've got to hurry. Second Kings 21 and 3. For he built up against the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. He worshipped. Did you hear that? He is worshipping these angels. These angels are the gods of the nations, are the gods of the age. Why do you think every nation has a different feel to it? Have you ever went to a nation, this one has a feel to it. There's something different about Russia than there is America. There's something feels different in South Korea than it does in North Korea. You know why? Because what controls the atmosphere? What is the authority of the air? These powers, these gods, these fallen angels, and these angels control the atmosphere over these nations. Every nation has taken on the persona of its angel. The divine council was at creation. This council, if you ever wanted to know who Yahweh was talking about in Genesis 1, let us make man in our image. It was the divine council. Job 38 and 4. Unmute yourself, brother. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who laid it? Me and three other gods? Me and, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? No. Yahweh. Where were you when I did all this? Read. Read. You want, me keep, you yeah. want me keep going to five? Keep going. No. Just okay. was. Oh, yeah. Read verse five. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Read. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the corner stone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Okay, who was there when he did all that? The heavenly council. The sons of Yahweh shouting for joy. Yep. Hallelujah. Let us create man. Because he always talks to his counsel. Genesis 1.26. We don't have to read it. You know that verse. Therefore let us make man in our own image. Yep. Let us go down and be a lying spirit. To, do you see? Let us. Us is the counsel of heaven. Why is it so hard for us to accept truth when we're so, we just prefer the lies? De Deuteronomy 4, 19. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven. Now, now, now he said, when you see all that, and then when you see the host of heaven, read. Shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them which Yahweh, thy God, hath divided unto all the nations under the whole heaven. Oh, wow. That's powerful. Wow. Your Bible just said that the host of heaven, why the nations have been divided unto them. Amen. Woo. Allotted means appointed territories. The Hebrew word is shalak, which means to assign to the host of heaven, nations were assigned. Our interaction with angels is a paramount misunderstanding in the church today. These angels are known as the powers 
of heaven. I don't have time to read all of those, but you need to. And when you see the word, the powers of heaven, it's speaking of this heavenly council. Hebrews 2 and 5, brothers, where I want to go now. Lord, I wish I had time to read all those verses. That's good. For unto, oh, go ahead. For unto the angels has he put not put into, let me start over. For unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world, this age, to come where oh, we speak. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's coming an age. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Some of y'all just got it. The millennial reign, there's coming an age where the angels will, because Israel will be ruling, Israel is Yahweh's portion, that day is coming where that will not be put into subjection of this heavenly council. It will be put in subjection to Yahweh and his son. Woo! And the brothers of that son, <laughs> that's you and me, folks. If you don't Ephraim. understand what I'm saying, if you ain't picking up what I'm putting down, you ain't picking up. Because there's coming a day when the heavenly council, those 70 angels, they will their day will be over for governing the earth and you will replace them and become those obedient sons of Yahweh that will govern the age to come. That's what you're training for, reigning. That's what you're schooling for, ruling. You're about to replace angels. And that's why these angels fight you from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, they know that the next age, they will not rule it. That's and why their job is to wear you down. Yeah. To make you think you're a nobody, you're a nothing. Hallelujah. Darling, you've been promised a great day that's coming when Yahshua shall rule and you'll sit right by it on all those thrones. Hallelujah. Woo! My God, y'all bear with me. My little, my little Pentecost just came out for a minute there. Y'all bear with me. Job 1 and 6, Job 2 and 1, read it. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh. Now there was a Satan. day that the heavenly council had a council meeting. Let's say it what it really, there was a day, a, a what day? I, I, you always set an appointment for a council meeting. <laughs> there was a day when Yahweh and the heavenly council had a council meeting. Read. And Satan came also among them. Oh, and they had an invited guest that came before the council. <laughs> Woo! That's why when people tell me they rebuking the devil, I'm like, darling. Quit wasting your time. Give thanks in all things. Let my, I'm telling you, we done turned the church into devil worship. Everybody's casting the devil out. Everybody's trying to, look, give thanks to the Lord in all things. All right. Now, now Satan came to the council meeting. He had been summoned to court. Read. Oh, you mean keep going there to the next verse, sir? Yeah. Uh, read. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? When Satan now, answered what, Yahweh. Well, I thought Yahweh knew everything. Why did Yahweh say to Satan, Now why have you requested permission to come to the council today? Yeah. Do y'all think I'm making this up? I'm telling you what that verse says. Yeah, that's truth. Read. Satan answered Yahweh and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Really? How many have ever read that verse that the eyes of the Lord go what? To and fro throughout the earth. Who do you think the eyes of the Lord are? The council. The Come heavenly on. council. They are the ones that report to Yahweh. Even your prayers. When you pray, you're, what did the Bible say? The angels of the Lord encamp round about those that fear him. These angels are the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. And they're watching over you. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, they are right there on assignment. They've been assigned to Israel. Read. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth Yahweh and escheweth evil? So the whole time every one of you are rebuking the devil out of your lives that God sent, you're rebuking an opportunity to prove to Satan what God already told him about you, that you were perfect. That you were perfect. God didn't tell Satan, go prove that Job is perfect. What did he tell Satan? Job is perfect. Job is perfect. That's why I'm going to honor him with the chance to prove it to you. Every one of you that's so busy. I need God to get this enemy out of my life. Well, Paul had a messenger from Satan, didn't he? That's an angel of Satan assigned to him. You've got messengers of Satan assigned to you. You better learn to give thanks to God for them. And you'll grow into spiritual authority. When I tell you about spiritual authority, let me tell all of you something. When you get real spiritual authority, you pray for a demon-possessed person for about two minutes. You ain't got to spend no hour, no 10 hours. Spiritual authority is when God trusts you with his authority because he's proven you. You speak the word. And if that ain't good enough, you ain't got no authority. You got a circus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sandra. That's good, Pastor. You need spiritual authority, but you cannot cast out demons if you don't understand the authority that God gave you over them, and you don't understand what God uses them for. I've got to hurry. Job 2 and 1. Again. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh. Now, here's another council meeting. Okay, read. And Satan come also among them to present himself before Yahweh. What was he there for? To make a request and to give a report and to get his marching orders. That ought to set you free from Satan for the rest of your life. Why was Satan there? To make requests, to give a report, and to get his marching orders. And you scared of the devil? And you scared of the devil? When you are Yahweh's portion and Satan reports to the one whose portion you are? Give thanks in all things. Now that verse will change your life. Give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God concerning you. Whatever Satan is doing and allowed to do in your life, this is the will of God concerning you. Give thanks and grow up and prove that you're a perfect believer, mature. I must move along. Psalms 82 and 1. Now let this verse blow some of y'all's minds. This is why preachers don't preach out of the Old Testament. It's not as easy as Jesus loves you. <laughs> God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He whoa, judges. Whoa, whoa. Yahweh stands in the council of the mighty. Now, who are the mighty ones? It's not you. Mm -mm. It's the supermen. It's the angels. So Yahweh stands in the council of angels. Read. He judges among the gods. Whoa. And Yahweh comes to the council to see if they're doing their job right. And he calls them what? Gods. Yes. Yahweh discerns among the gods. Now, in this case, not just the heavenly council. But he's coming to judge even the fallen angels, the mighty ones. Read. Let me keep going in Psalms yes. 82. How long will ye judge unjustly? 
and accept the persons of the wicked. Now, now he's talking to the fallen angels. He says, how long is wicked going to prosper, basically? Read. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Now, what is the heavenly council supposed to be doing? Defending the poor and the needy. Delivering them. Read. They know not, neither will they understand. Before they, you get confused, this is a conversation Yahweh is having with the heavenly council and the fallen angels. He's asking questions back and forth to both groups. To this group, he's talking about the wicked. To this group, he turned back and says, y'all need to be doing this. You need to be delivering the poor. So when we pray to God to deliver me from poverty, we're really, he's not going to do it. One of his angels, see? Anyway, read on. They walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course what did he just say about these mighty fallen angels they walk in what darkness darkness and the foundations of the earth are out oh my god have you ever looked around and said my god what's happening i don't even know the world i live in the foundations of the earth are out of course read i have said Ye are gods. I have said all of you are gods. Now go read that scripture to the next person that tells you there's only one God. And all of your and all of you are children of the most high. Now, why are you all gods? Because of what Pastor Vaughn's been trying to teach you for a year. Gods produce gods. Gods. Hallelujah. He said, you're gods because all of you are the sons of Yahweh, even the fallen angels, even Lucifer. Read. But ye shall die like men. But and you fall. shall perish like men. He's talking now to the fallen ones. Read. And fall like one of the princes. And you will fall like one of the princesses. Now, when he said right there, you shall die like men, that word is a mistranslation. You shall fall like men. Because spirits cannot die. You will fall like men fall. You didn't have to fall. You could have sat on this heavenly council. You could have ruled. But now you're going to become non-important, just like fallen men will be. Read. Arise, O oh God. Now he turns earth. and says, Arise, O oh gods, O oh angels, O oh heavenly council. Read. Judge the earth, for, sh for thou shalt inherit all nations. Whoa! This all happened at the beginning. Woo! <laughs> This heavenly council would inherit the nations because they did not fall like men. See, this is back. This heavenly council took place after the war in heaven. When those angels fell to earth and set the foundations out of course. And it caused the great ice age. And I don't have time to reteach all that. But hopefully this verse makes it all line up for you. He said, you set the foundations, the sun, the, everything's out of course. Then he turns and says, those of you that didn't rebel, arise, you're going to inherit the nations. And then Deuteronomy tells us, he divided the earth according to these 70 angels that arose. Am I making That's sense? Good. Is anybody, That's good, Pastor. Is anybody getting it? Very good. Okay. All right. I don't want to leave you. I want you to understand what's really going on. All right. Keep reading. That was the end of Psalms 82. Let me keep All going. right. Now, let's go to Daniel chapter 10, verse 5, verse 6, verse 12, and verse 13. Then and I notice, lifted. And notice what these angels are now called. Read. Then I lift up my eyes and look, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins was girded with fine gold and uphaz. His body also was like 
the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like a color to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Go verse to 12. Six. Yeah, verse 12. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before Yahweh, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Now, here comes an angel from that heavenly council. As a result to Daniel's prayer, and when he comes, he said, the first time you prayed, the answer was on the way. But listen carefully, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the king of Persia. Now what are these angels called? Princes over regions. Now yeah. do you get it? Now do you get it? Wow. The prince of Persia is that angel, one was assigned on the heavenly council, and then Satan assigns one from the fallen council. Both of these are assigned to a region. And Daniel, Daniel prayed, and the angel from the heavenly council could not, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He couldn't get the will of God to earth. Wow. Dan Daniel had to keep praying the will of God to earth because he's living in Satan's kingdom. Why didn't that answer get to Daniel? Because the one that was ruling over Persia fought this angel that was bringing the message for how many days? Four one months. Is, yeah. See, this is the thing about spiritual warfare. The fallen angels are just as powerful as the heavenly council. That's what people don't understand. And until the millennial reign, they have free reign. Their powers are not restrained. They have a legal lease on planet Earth. And you're a citizen of this Earth. That's why you now know you're in this world, but you're not of it. He called him and he said, when... Then I had to call for another member of the council to come help me, Michael. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Michael is, you might want to go watch my video called The Angel of Yahweh on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And no, it's not Jesus like the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. But you need to know who, Yah who Michael is. Woo! I got to hurry. What did we just find out? That there was a hierarchy in heaven. Gabriel was sent by Yahweh to bring revelation to Daniel. He was stopped for three weeks. That's why when I get a revelation in the spirit, I know I've been visited by an angel. Hallelujah. Pastor, can I say something real quick? Oh, yes. Uh, Daniel 12, this always stood out to me. And at that time, Michael shall stand well, I'm not, up. I'm going there next, brother. Give me oh, a okay. Second. That's my next book. Listen carefully. Yahweh, when he sends me a revelation... I know it's an angelic visitation. Many people don't understand why I do. I, I Do you ever see me jump like that? Come on. I, I can seizures. feel the flutter. I can feel the flutter of their wings. Oh, hallelujah. My. I can feel when this earthly atmosphere changes around me and light comes in. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, Brother Vaughn, that's emotions. Let me hit you in the head with a hammer and I'll find your emotions. <laughs> Woo. You better believe I get emotional when my atmosphere changes, when that, when that being that Daniel saw begins to surround me and reveal the words of God to me. Woo, honey, yeah, oh. it changes. That ain't Pentecostal. That's just, that's just what it is. It is what it is. Amen. Glory to God. Then the angelic ruler over Persia rose up in protest over Yahweh's command. 
Mr. Now do you see why the earth is groaning and travail, waiting to be delivered from their bondage of these angelic rulers? And it's not happened yet. It's going to happen when you come up in the resurrection and take over. Oh, hallelujah. But nobody's teaching you how to prepare for that because they all talking about heaven. Amen. Do you see the purpose of this ministry? Sister Sandra, give me a break. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. I was listening to you talking about uh, the groups that want to reject the law of God. Yes. And this is the scripture that I wanted to uh, read and to ask your opinion on. And it's concerning those who are overcomers. It's in Revelation uh, 15 and 3. And it says, <clears throat> and they sing the song of Moses, the servant <laughs> of Yahweh, and the song of the Lamb. So he's including Ooh. them both. My God, Together. son, and that is the hundred and forty-four thousand. Marvelous for thy works, O Yahweh El Shaddai. Just and true are your ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Yahweh, and glorify thy name? For you are all, only are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Ooh, that is so powerful. I preach on that when I teach on the 144,000, Sister Sandra. That is going to be the qualifications for the first resurrection. Torah and spirit. Spirit and truth. Moses' law and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> that is Hallelujah. powerful. And that is what the church is missing. The Pentecostal church is missing it. They've got this spirit, outpouring of the spirit. But they reject the law of Yahweh. And it happened. And then the, the messianics are rejecting the spirit. God's raised our voice up. Somebody said, are we messianic? No, that's a mess. If I'm reading that right, it, it's saying that without that, you cannot overcome the beast. You can't. And therefore, you cannot be in the 144,000. Because what are the 144,000? The overcomers. Overcomers. You must have the law of God to overcome. I, bro, Brother Morgan is my scripture reader today. That This man, his testimony, he was an addict. You ought to see the pictures of his past. He was a total addict. And he'd been in church. His grandmother's a preacher, pastor. Been in church all of his life. But it took this message to deliver him from addiction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say amen, Brother Morgan. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish we could show that picture of what you used to look like under your hoodie. My God. God delivered him because it took the message of the law of God. That's to right. Overcome. That's right. Amen. Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. Sister Jill Sidock, good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Um, You're muted. No, I'm not muted. No, I got um, you. Okay. I have a question. <laughs> Forgive us for being ignorant on this. Um, we have a kind of a serious fam, um, family member. I'm a family member with a serious mental disorder, several. Yes. And we have been praying and fasting and Mommy, rebuking Mom. the evil and all that in there. And now I'm confused about how to pray for this situation. Because you said not to rebuke. Well, yeah. yeah. So when I, I, not to give glory to the enemy, you don't have to rebuke the enemy. You okay. pray, you pray for them. Okay. You bring a petition before the father and you present them to the father and the father, the father himself will do the healing if it's going to be done. These, okay. listen, the Bible doesn't tell you to rebuke the devil. It says, resist the devil. Okay. Yeah. Now, it tells you how to resist the devil right after that. It Submit yourself to the mighty hand of God, okay. and the devil will flee from you. When we okay. submit to God's obedience, Absolutely. Satan has to flee from our life. That's oh. how we resist the devil. Okay. Your job now, the Bible said, is to pray for all men. You present them to the Father in the name of Joshua, and when you do that, you ask for his deliverance. Okay. You, you know, we got people walking around after hearing these charismatic teachers for the last 30 years, commanding everything, yes. demanding everything, you know, and, and, and listen, 
The Bible said when you pray, you go to the Father in humility, and you recognize that only he can do the work, and then you, you wait to hear what the Father says, and when you hear what he says, you can repeat what he says with authority. But we pray. The Bible said pray for all men. So I'm going to be joining you in prayer for your family members. Yes, yeah, this is a serious issue, so thank you. God bless you both. Brother Joseph. Brother Shane, I, I, I just have to say how blessed, how blessed I am. My wife, my family, every time we get a chance to sit with you. But I want to ask, I want to thank Brother Morgan for reading today. And there's two things I noticed, and I'd just like to ask him a question. I noticed his Bible is falling apart. And to me, that's a sign of a life that's together with God. Amen. And I also, noticed, I also noticed behind him, and if he could answer this, if those are scriptures on his mirror, it just profoundly spoke to my heart that when we look in the mirror, most people look to check their hair, to look for vanity. But if he's looking at the word of God, he's seeing his true identity. And I just praise God for him because I have a best friend that came the, through the same route and God has been glorified in his life as well. So just pray, praise God for you, Brother Morgan. And thank brother you, Shane, my brother. Thank you. And Amen. Brother Shane, I want, to, I want to just give you one last thing because I know you want to hear it. My brother used your letter in his union in New York. They were going to fire him. They were going to kick him out after 38 years. He was going to lose all his health benefits and everything. He called me. He reached out because he knows his brother loves the Lord. And he loves God. He loves God. He's still slow in his walk, but he loves God. Sure. And I said, I have, I have brother, brother Pastor Shane here and this letter. And he took it and praise God, they gave him the exemption. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take, praise take the Lord. that, devil. Take that, you take fallen that. angels that wanted to vaccinate everybody in this Woo! nation. Take that. And guess Woo! who told Hallelujah. me? Where did the revelation come from for me to write that letter? Those angels. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I prayed to the Father, tell me what to write. That letter's worked when Jay Seculo's didn't work. And I love Jay. That's not personal. But Brother Yahweh Shane, told me how to write it. Brother Shane, he said to me, those words were beautiful. Those were the words from my brother. And it was the first time I heard in his life say, praise God. And he said to me, I owe you, brother. I love you and I owe you. I said, you oh. don't owe me anything. That's a beautiful thing, brother. God bless you. Thank you for sharing of you guys. Daniel 12 and 1, 10 and 20, brother Morgan, real quickly. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And now there who, shall be a... Who does Michael stand up for? The children of Yahweh. And who is that? Israel. Us, Israel. Amen. All the other nations, they have those... The mightiest angel of all is Michael. And who does he stand for? Yahweh's portion. Y'all need to go watch my video, The Angel of Yahweh. Oh, it's powerful. Daniel 10 and 20. Oh, Lord, I got to roll. Then said he, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee, and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. Now he's and going... Going back to battle with the prince of Persia, read. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. Now another prince from Greece is going to come and join in the battle. See, that's what happened in 2020, folks, is what I'm trying to tell you. There was demon powers from every nation of the world sitting here. Coming together. Coming together to destroy America through their servant, Joe Biden and Jezebel Harris. Read Psalms 103 and 20, and then I must say goodbye. Hallelujah. So what is your job Bless. in all of this? The more you pray, Daniel, the more those angels of heaven persevere in the battle. Church, the more you pray... They need to hear you praying for their strength. The Bible said there are angels that excel in strength when they hear the voice of the word. I don't have time to teach that. Maybe that's what it is. Read Psalms 103 and 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that exalt, that excel in strength. Yeah. That do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. 
Ah, now who's supposed to put a voice to his word? We are. That's right. The commandment keepers. So how does the angels excel in strength and battle against these fallen demons? They hear the voice of the word through commandment keeping believers on planet earth. That's why you pray, thy will, I gotta go. I love y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody have a blessed Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Goodbye, everybody. Shabbat Thank you, Shalom. Pastor. Thank you.